UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou's dreams of becoming a championship boxer can never come to fruition without the blessing and promotion of the UFC president Dana White. And Uncle Dana hates his octagon fighters heading into the squared circle. First, it's super risky for Dana White and the UFC to send any of their athletes into a boxing ring to face a championship level boxer because boxing is a combat sport. The aim is literally to hurt people. Injuries and their associated long layoffs are common in boxing, just as they are in MMA. And if a UFC champ gets injured in a one-off boxing bout, they hold up the division and damage the UFC's competition. Secondly, it's unlikely that a UFC fighter, even with years of MMA striking experience, is going to win. In fact, it's much more likely that against a boxer with years of professional boxing experience, the UFC fighter doesn't even look competitive. That will damage the UFC's reputation. And third, there's little to gain financially for the UFC in the short run, but even more so in the long run, because fighters will start demanding more money for bouts. A lot more money. For example, for Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder 3, Fury earned around 30 million from the purse alone. Wilder earned around 20 million. That's before pay-per-view and sponsorship and anything else. For UFC 270, you'd have to combine the purse earnings of Ngannou and Gan, Brandon Moreno and Davison Figueredo, and the rest of the entire card, and they'd have to restage the entire event another 25 to 30 times just to get paid what Fury got for his one fight. That's not Fury and Wilder combined, just Fury. It's not simply money. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, money is a part of it, but it's also the term of the contract that uh, I don't agree with it. You know, I don't feel like uh, it's fair. I don't feel like I'm free. Uh, I'm uh, free. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm, I've been treated good. In boxing, the champions make the lion's share of the profit. Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin. Errol Spence Jr. Anthony Joshua. Champions like these demand tens of millions of dollars every fight, and they get it. But UFC champs do not get the tens of millions of dollars that championship boxers do, and they are contractually obliged to fight for the UFC. But for the Predator, there may be real hope in all this. Let's give the fans what they want to see. There's only one fight out there that's important. That's Mayweather and Conor McGregor. In 2017, the undefeated five-weight boxing champ Floyd Mayweather came out of retirement to call out the UFC's dual division champion, Conor McGregor. It was exactly the sort of fight that White refused to make. But there he was, right in the thick of it, co-promoting the whole affair. Yeah, because you have Floyd Mayweather, who is arguably the greatest boxer of all time, and you have Conor McGregor, who is a massive star in, in our sport, um, you know, and people are interested in this fight. Conor McGregor is huge in Europe, Australia, Brazil, obviously Canada and the United States, um, and, and then Floyd Mayweather, you, you take both of those guys and you put it together, and it, it's the biggest fight ever. Firstly, sending McGregor in to face Mayweather was as risk-free a scenario as this sort of combat scenario could get. McGregor was a naturally much larger man who had never been knocked out by much larger men who had tried to knock him out. And Mayweather was defense personified. His whole game plan revolved around not getting hit. When they fought, Mayweather hadn't knocked out an opponent in six years. And the last time he did, he did this. Victor Ortiz, who had been fighting dirty, had his hands by his side after apologizing with a hug, and Mayweather cracked him. So it doesn't really count. Mayweather's last knockout before that was two years earlier, so he hadn't really knocked anyone out in eight years. Of course, McGregor wasn't afraid. My game is like being in a car crash. You know what I'm saying? It's shin bone, knees, elbows. It ain't, it ain't for the faint-hearted. This game... I'm actually kind of shocked sometimes because it's like, you mean I got, you mean I'm getting all this money? You mean I'm quadrupling my net worth and no one even's gonna try and kick me or, or choke me or elbow me or, or knee me and I'm getting quadrupling my money? S -s -s Sign me up.
Secondly, McGregor is hands down one of the best, most accurate, and inventive strikers MMA has ever seen. If the UFC had to bet on someone to look good against a championship boxer, it was going to be McGregor against a man not known for punching back. And they were right. The copy box numbers were in nine of Floyd Mayweather's fights where it went 12 rounds, his opponents hit him with less than 100 punches. Connor hit him with 111 in less than 10 rounds. It was a great fight. I, I, I'm really proud of Connor. And thirdly, and very much most importantly, the UFC were destined to make a lot of money. Mayweather does nothing but make money for himself and whoever he's fighting, and he did just that. But no one else on the roster has anywhere near the earning potential that McGregor did, not even close. So what gives Ngano a chance that no other UFC champ has had? Make no mistake about it, Tyson Fury's boxing skills are above and beyond anyone in the UFC. Combine that with the fact he's a 6'9", 250-pound giant, and he bludgeons any of White's champions in the squared circle. Put it like this, Wilder was a 6'7 champion boxer who had scored 41 professional knockouts, with 20 of those in the first round. He's as lethal a heavyweight champion as there has ever been, and Fury stopped him twice before the final bell. Fury makes Ngano look silly and could potentially put him out of action for a long time, which damages the UFC competition and reputation. And a fight between the two is still not worth the hundreds of millions of dollars that Mayweather and McGregor guaranteed. It still doesn't make sense, but Ngannou is playing hardball with the UFC, and Fury could offer them a profitable way out. Ngannou versus Cyril Gaon was the last fight on Ngannou's contract, but due to the UFC's champion clause, his contract goes until the end of 2022. He does not have to fight during this time, and he is eyeing off a nine-month surgery layoff to repair damage in his knee. For Dana White, they could give Ngannou one more fight, a modified boxing bout against the Gypsy King Tyson Fury, with White and the UFC co-promoting. Fury will win. The UFC will make a handy pile of cash, and they can let Ngannou go without bowing to his demands for more money. So Ngannou might win this battle to box with the UFC, but he'll lose the war, like so many have done against the UFC before. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you want more fight sports in your life, just hit the subscribe button.